Hi, let's start with the next section, the perceptron. In this section, we'll introduce another linear model for binary classification tasks called the perceptron. While the perceptron is seldom used today, understanding it and its limitations is important in order to understand the models that we'll discuss in the following sections. Now we'll move on to the first video of this section that deals with the basics of perceptron. In this video, we're going to start with the basic understanding of a perceptron. Then we'll look at different activation functions and the perceptron learning algorithm. We'll finally perform document classification with scikit-learn. Let's start with the perceptron. An individual neuron can be thought of as a computational unit that processes one or more inputs to produce an output. A perceptron functions analogously to a neuron. It accepts one or more inputs, processes them and returns an output. Perceptrons are capable of online learning. The learning algorithm can update the model's parameters using a single training instance rather than the entire batch of training instances. Online learning is useful for learning from training sets that are too large to be represented in memory. Perceptrons are currently visualized using a diagram like this. The circles labeled X1, X2 and X3 are input units. Each input unit represents one feature. Perceptrons frequently use an additional input unit that represents a constant bias term, but this input unit is usually emitted from diagrams. The circle in the center is a computational unit, or the neuron's body. The edges connecting the input units to the computational unit are analogous to dendrites. Each edge is associated with a parameter or weight. The edge directed away from the computational unit returns the output and can be thought of as the axon. Our next topic is activation functions. The perceptron classifies instances by processing a linear combination of the features and the model parameters using an activation function as shown in this equation. Here, wy are the model's parameters. b is a constant bias term and phi is the activation function. The linear combination of the parameters and inputs is sometimes called pre-activation. Several different activation functions are commonly used. Rosenblatt's original perceptron used a heaviside step function, also called the unit step function. The heaviside step function is shown in this equation, where x is the weighted combination of the features. If the weighted sum of the features and the bias term is greater than zero, the activation function returns one, and the perceptron predicts that the instance is the positive class. Otherwise, the function returns zero, and the perceptron predicts that the instance is the negative class. The heaviside step activation function is plotted in this figure. Another common activation function is the logistic sigmoid. Here is the equation. X is the weighted sum of the inputs. Unlike the step function, the logistic sigmoid is differentiable. This difference will become important when we discuss artificial neural networks. Moving on to the perceptron learning algorithm. The perceptron learning algorithm begins by setting the weights to zero or to small random values. It then predicts the class for a training instance. The perceptron is an error-driven learning algorithm. If the prediction is correct, the algorithm continues to the next instance. If the prediction is incorrect, the algorithm updates the weights. More formally, the update rule is given here. For each training instance, the value of the parameter for each feature is incremented by alpha times dj minus yj of t multiplied by xji, where dj is the true class for the instance j, yj of t is the predicted class for instance j, xj, i is the value of the ith feature for instance j, and alpha is a hyperparameter that controls the learning rate. If the prediction is correct, dj minus yj of t equals zero, and this term equals zero. That is, if the prediction is correct, the weight is not updated. If the prediction is incorrect, we compute the product of dj minus yjt, the value of the feature and the learning rate. We then add the product, which may be negative, to the weight. Each pass through the training instance is called an epoch. The learning algorithm has converged when it completes an epoch without misclassifying any of the instances. Now let's look at document classification with the perceptron. Like other estimators, the perceptron class implements fit and predict methods, and hyperparameters are specified through its constructor. Perceptron also implements a partial fit method, which allows the classifier to be trained incrementally. Let's see this with an example. First, we import the necessary packages. 
In this example, we train a perceptron to classify documents from the 20 news groups dataset. The dataset consists of approximately 20,000 documents sampled from 20 Usenet news groups. The dataset is commonly used in document classification and clustering experiments. Scikit-learn even provides a convenience function for downloading and reading the dataset, that is, fetch underscore 20 news groups. First, we download and read the dataset using fetch underscore 20 news groups function. Consistent with other built-in datasets, the function returns an object with data, target, and target names attributes. We also specify that documents' headers, footers, and quotes should be removed. Each of the news groups uses different formatting conventions in the headers and footers. Retaining them makes classifying the documents artificially easy. We'll train a perceptron to classify documents from three news groups: Rec Sports Hockey, Rec Sports Baseball, and Rec Auto. Perceptron is capable of multi-class classification. It will use the one versus all strategy to train a classifier for each of the classes in the training data. We'll represent the documents as TF-IDF weighted bags of words. The partial fit method can be used in conjunction with hashing vectorizer to train from large or streaming data in a memory constrained setting. We produce TF-IDF vectors using the TF-IDF vectorizer, train the perceptron and evaluate it on the test set and then we print the classification report. Run the script now. Without hyperparameter optimization, the perceptron's average precision, recall, and F1 score are 0.84. In this video, we learned a lot about the perceptron.